Hello everyone, Max Voltage here again, talking about EVGA again. Again, breaking with my normal uh, stuff that I talk about. But uh, EVGA decided to make another change to their Q system, and this time, in my opinion, for the better. But I'll go through more about that later. So let's go through what the change was, um, and some further clarification that was brought on further in the day. Uh, and then we'll talk about uh, my opinion on it, as well as maybe some conspiracy theories that some people may bring up. So we'll we'll talk about it a little bit here as well. So here are the changes that have been made. So the Q system will be rolled back to the previous rule, meaning everything will go back to being the same. That's what the first thing says, okay? So... Anyone who missed a card from October 4th as a result of the new rule change will be notified on the next, the next release. So they're basically taking care of those people that may have been subject to uh, the detriment of this rule, this new rule. They're going to roll them into the next, um, the next release. But number two is where the changes are still different than the last time. But I think these are good changes and I think they're fair. It's a, it's a happy medium. Um, and if they had proposed this yesterday, I would have been okay with it. Would never, probably would have never made the first video. But uh, in order to get game, to get cards to gamers sooner, sooner, please go to the notify page here and keep only the top two selected cards that you want. So basically, what they're doing is you're they're only allowing people in the queue to get two more cards. That's it. Only two cards. So basically everybody should go clean up their queue and only keep the two cards that they really, really want. Now, thankfully, EVGA gives us some direction here and says, well, okay, what are, without telling you exactly what we're going to be getting, the only two cards you should keep in your queues are the For the Win 3 Ultra models and the XC3 Ultra models. So basically anything that's got ultra in the name, pretty much anything other than that, there are, there are no guarantees. They're going to get any additional stock or get a lot less than those other models. So certainly there could be two strategies here. Well, everybody's going to be eliminating all the other models. So that gives me a much better chance, I suppose, uh, on those other models, or you just go whole hog and, only go to those um, models that um, that they specify here, knowing that they're going to get more of them. I think more importantly than that is understand where you are in the queue and only keep those models that you're closest to. That way you can fulfill your orders much sooner. Obviously, if you have that one dream card you want, you're going to want to keep that one. But anyway, so they made the change. Thankfully, um, for those of us that did put forth the effort of getting into the EVGAQ, uh, I'm very thankful that they re-looked at this and came up with a solution that I think is a happy medium for everybody. It gives people additional opportunity. It means that somebody's not going to be completely hogging all the GPUs within the Q system. Um, and actually, I should also mention what other important change that they made that the Q system um, will also be requiring SMS verification. Um, that actually, oh yeah, there it says, EVGA is going to be adding SMS verification to the checkout process for all notifications to catch bot orders. So there right now, that's one of the things that's being talked about in the forums as to what if the same phone number is on multiple accounts uh, I'm not sure at this point, but my guess is that that's one of the things EVGA is trying to stop is that people that have obviously one phone number and have multiple accounts, they're trying to stop people from having multiple accounts, just like they're, they don't want things, the same SKU sent to the same address more than once. So that's an interesting change and a very welcome change. I'm hoping that when they do additional cues in the future, hopefully, that they will make that part of the verification in the queue system um, so that 
you sign up for the queue and maybe not right away, but you're eventually going to get an SMS verification that in order to stay in the queue, you have to respond to that within a certain period of time. I think that'd be great if they did that. So anyway, so again, my opinion, very, very happy with their decision. Uh, like I said, I would have been happy with this decision. Uh, maybe not happy may not be the right word, but um, I would have been like, yeah, sure. No problem. Um, I'm happy with the decision because I was so unhappy with their previous decision yesterday. So that leads me to leads me into the next part of this, which is, you know, put your conspiracy hat on. Um, could EVGA, and, and before I even go into all this, this does, all the things I'm going to talk about from here on out do not affect my opinion of EVGA. I don't necessarily believe any of the things I'm going to talk about. I'm saying that people will be thinking these things. And so I'm just getting it out there. So regardless of, of why EVGA made the decision, I'm focusing on the decision that was made and I'm happy with the decision. I don't care so much about how it was arrived to, although I would love to have been a fly on the wall in these meetings when these things were, were being decided. I'm sure there were probably some heated um, discussions as people had very different opinions about the right thing to do. So anyway, put your conspiracy hat on. I have two conspiracy theories on this. Um, the first one is that EVGA came out with the harsh decision just to make everybody all up in arms about it so that they could come back with a decision that some would probably view as unpopular as well, but made it a lot easier to get everybody's approval of it. So if they had come out yesterday and said, you know what, we're limiting everybody to two cards, there may have been the, well, wait a minute, that's going backwards. You had this agreement. You've told us all these rules. They would have come out with all the same arguments. But in this case, because they came out and went so far the one direction and then came back to the middle, it makes the middle more palatable, shall we say. Um, again, I don't know. I don't think that's what they were thinking, but it is honestly probably what had happened with some people that made it a lot easier to accept the, the compromise, which if they initially came out with that, it wouldn't have been a compromise. So it also makes them look very um, customer responsive that there was this big up in arms all yesterday about it. And then they came back and said, hey, we heard you loud and clear. So we made these following changes. So that kind of leads me into my next um, part about it also is that who are companies most loyal customers? It's not the ones that buy products and nothing ever goes wrong. You know, you buy your refrigerator that lasts you 30 years. Am I a loyal customer? Nah, probably not, actually. Um, you know, my Maytag downstairs, 30-year-old washer and dryer. Uh, am I a, May a loyal Maytag customer? Not really. Um, they just made a really good product and I wanted to buy it. But again, didn't make me a loyal customer. The most loyal customers are the ones where there is a problem and it's how the company responds to that problem that makes loyal customers. So in the case of EVGA, they have rabid customers because of their RMA process, far, in my opinion, far exceeds anybody, any of the other companies RMA processes. They push other companies to get better in that department. Um, but EVGA has been known for being very uh, good about fixing cards or getting getting cards back into uh, customers' hands quickly without, you know, too much struggle. Um, so for those people that have been through that process, yeah, you've made rabid fans. And in this case, you know, loyal customers also want to be heard. You know, if you know, now that all these people said all these things and that that was wrong and then EVGA said, we heard you, that again makes more loyal customers. So no matter the reason as to why they did what they did, um, I really think it was genius, absolutely genius what they did. They made themselves look very, very good to gamers by coming out with the extreme rule and then came back to the middle to the point where, hey, we're still being pro gamer, 
but we're still being pro-consumer and upholding what we had, how we had said the system was going to work in the first place. So regardless of, of how they got there, it's absolute genius in my mind. Kudos to EVGA for making this process go like this. I, I, I'm, I'm in awe. It's, um, it is a marketing, um, a strike of marketing genius in my mind. I think it worked out really, really well for EVGA. So anyway, if you have any, any comments, uh, pro or con about the second modification, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you like this video, please press the like thumbs up. And if you didn't go ahead and press the thumbs down, especially if you don't like the EVGA, uh, second modification. Uh, and if you like this kind of content, please press subscribe. Thanks. And, uh, everybody have a good night.